you know, I, I'm Jake Williams. Brandon McCrillis is here with me today uh, to discuss, uh, basically to discuss uh, some of the Iranian cyber threats and the implications of uh, us, uh, the U.S., withdrawing from the, uh, you know, from the nuclear plan. Um, I, I, I'm not going to get this political here because because that's not my thing. I do cybersecurity. Uh, you know, don't really care about people's opinions on on the deal and the withdrawal and all that stuff. Uh, we do want to uh, talk quickly about and, you know when you see this. Uh, one, obviously, we'll make the slide deck available uh, for what that's worth later if you want to use it for a briefing material or collateral. Uh, but second, uh, you know, we want to talk quickly about uh, you know, know that this was thrown together hastily. It was one of those things we, we were chatting about uh, again over lunch, surprisingly. Uh, and uh, then said, you know, hey, we, we ought to chat about this with the broader community. And then 30 minutes ago, I decided to throw some slides together. So, so winning. Um, you know, we want to quickly talk about three types of state actors. And, and uh, you know, as we talk about these, um, you know, it's government hackers uh, controlled by the government, right? Obviously, they work for the government, controlled by the government. We have private entities that are controlled by the government, contractors, effectively, uh, who are doing, uh, doing attacks, uh, nation state attacks. But but they may be loosely controlled by the government, and then private entities not controlled at all by the government. Uh, these are our wild card folks. And you know, we talk about our government hackers. Uh, these guys operate with the most discipline. Uh, although it's probably worth noting um, that, and we've seen this in some of our incidents, right, where we see some attackers moonlighting as, as cyber criminals, and in fact, in some cases, using our customers' networks as uh, basically pivots to begin sending. Uh, let's say uh, pharma spam, right? Was one that we uh, one that we observed. Um, so even though these guys are the most precise in their targeting, uh, we've definitely seen some uh, interesting incidents uh, where it's it's clear that the entry was done by a nation state group. Uh, but then we've seen nation state actors, uh, not necessarily Iranians in this case, but nation state actors in general, uh, operating in in cyber crime uh, cyber crime disciplines, right? which is kind of kind of interesting. Yeah. Then you got the private entities that are controlled by the government. Usually, this is the uh, uh, you know the whole go go hack at, at an arm's length, right? Stay uh, stay out of the uh, direct uh, direct line of fire, and this offers some plausible deniability, right? So uh, political tensions are high, or might preclude attacks otherwise. Uh, although they tend to follow the same general targeting discipline from what we've seen, uh, they they may lack the operational discipline of, of of the government hacker. So again, in this case, picture somebody's being contracted to go target or go attack a particular target, but but they don't have the same level, the government won't have the same level in most cases of control over specifically how that target is prosecuted uh, as opposed to the, as opposed to with, uh, with a full on uh, government, uh, you know, government let off. Um, and, and then you've got the not controlled by the government. And these are the people I think that are keeping me up at night. Um, these folks are irrational, they're hard to predict. There are wild cards in the operational space, right? Uh, in this case, they are actors operating in what they believe the best interests or may believe the best interests of the state are, right? Um, and they may or may not work at the direction of their government. Uh, you know, we were chatting about Putin. What was it that Putin said? Uh, some people just wake up and want to hack or something along those lines? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, if, if we're talking, which I'm talking Putin, but we're talking, uh, if we're talking Iran. Yeah, of course, um, the right, Shah. I right, apologize. Right. Let's bring it back yeah. to the Shah. Right, yes. Sorry. If we're talking Iran, um, what I was uh, as we were going through these slides, uh, definitely from a from a nation state perspective. I mean, what, what do you what do you think the the most value is? Right, having these arms length contractors for hire, wild guns, um, or having these. You know, I, I think it's great for a, a nation state. Again, this is this is evil hat on, um, but having these government controlled uh, private entities doing non sanctioned cyber operations. Um, and then also, it's great to have these private entities not controlled by the government, kind of these wild cards to be able to point back to and say, oh, no, 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 that, that wasn't us this time. It was, it was oh. them because of this. Oh, totally. I totally want these folks in my network. I mean, excuse me, in my, uh, my operational space. I don't mean in my network. Again, I'm, I'm doing what Brandon's doing here, and I put my, my black hat, my evil hat on. Um, you know, I, I, I think at this point, uh, we, we expect that, you know, the, the government uh, largely is letting these slide, governments in general are letting a lot of these slide. Uh, because they make the operational background uh, pretty noisy, right? And, and then again, you have somebody to go plausibly, uh, go through some plausible deniability at and be like, well, was that a sanctioned op or is that something that we tried really, really hard to stop? Really, with all our heart and soul, we tried to tried to stop it, right? Um, and, and, and you know, that, that actually kind of brings in another great point. We start talking about hacktivism in general. Um, you know, Iranian hacktivism, uh, we've seen some hacktivism in the past attributed back to Iran. Uh, we saw the Iranian cyber army, uh, air quotes there, right? But the Iranian cyber army did a lot of targeted DDoS, uh, DDoS attacks. Uh, and originally, was uh, there was some deniability it was really the Iranian government. I'm not sure where we're at on that officially now. 
Uh, I have my own personal beliefs. I'm, I'm sure Brandon does as well. Um, you know, some of these operations that we've seen, uh, maybe, and I don't want to use, you know, big words like anonymous or, or other hacktivism groups, but um, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I guess maybe a good place to say, and I'm interested in your, your kind of thought on this, but the if I'm in nation state operations today and I want to go perform a, a denial service attack, do I do it myself or, or do I enlist the help of, of anonymous or another group to, and I don't mean overtly enlist their help. I mean, make them mad about something, right? Uh, I mean, now, of course, nobody can be, uh, can be influenced 2016 election, Russia, well, sorry, sorry, uh, Freudian slip there, but the, seriously, I mean, we start talking about this. What do you think? Would, would you be inciting them or? I mean, just, I mean, if you look at, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that the psychological uh, operational warfare component there is is it has to be used. I mean, we see that in in war and conflict throughout history. Um, you know, uh, one organization or, or entity or, or nation state uh, antagonizing another group um, that that pushes or behind is behind a specific political reason to you know um, uh, in a roundabout way do their own bidding. Right. So it's yeah. um, a sacrificial uh, sacrificial. Uh, well, how interesting Sorry. here, right? Because you say sacrificial, right? And and in the past, that's largely been the case, right? You you incite a, a suicide bomb, or you incite a uh, you know something, and that that removes that entity. But this is really an interesting spot where you know we use that language, but cyber truly is. Please forgive me here. God's going to kill a kitten somewhere, but the fifth domain, right? Um, and, and here, is it really sacrificial? Is it really a sacrificial offering per se? Because that. That other group continues to be effective. Their yeah. their strike doesn't reduce their efficacy uh, later in many cases. Yeah, I mean, you can also see this may have gone a little bit bad if we look at uh, what's it late twenty twelve with the Bank of America mm -hmm. um, hacks. Uh, it kind of came out as is this is definitely nation state, and then it was oh no, this is hacktivism, right? Because of the video that was was released about the Prophet Muhammad, and and, and I mean again, we're not going to get too deep into that, but uh, you know, it, it sometimes. Um, uh, it sometimes works, and then it's sometimes just like this, this laughable, uh, laughable excuse. Like you know how uh, there there is no way that someone be, that's that's um, upset about this political thing would have had these capabilities and had this this pinpoint precision in operations. Right? Yeah, I, I think that's a good way to a uh, good way to put it, right? So so yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and look, uh, you know, I'll throw out here that we've seen some absolutely, uh, absolutely crazy reasons for hacktivism given in the past with with some of our clients. Um, I, I am done with anybody who comes to me and says, well, we don't need to worry about hacktivism because we don't do anything. I'm like, no, time out. I have story after story of people who also didn't think they get targeted for hacktivism uh, who got, uh, you know, who got hit. Uh, all the way from, uh, we had one where a gentleman let an employee go. Uh, dad was a pastor, by the way, for time card fraud. Uh, dad's a pastor at a mega church, right? And uh, what are the odds? Uh, dad uh, basically goes to his congregation uh, and says, hey, uh, at Wednesday, Wednesday at noon, we're all going to go to this website and fill out this form repeatedly, uh, which is a very large uh, distributed denial service. You want to come down to it, uh, you know, and, and we're not talking about a small, you know, one room church with, with a couple dozen families. Uh, we're talking about thousands of families attending uh, you know, this particular uh you know, congregation. So, uh, you know, again, uh, that's obviously not nation state, but I want to come back around and realize that, you know, again, in this case, uh, well, first, uh, anybody can be a hacktivism target. And then second, uh, in this specific case, uh, if you're operating in the Middle East or in the US or in the UK or in Europe, um, you know, most of the modern world, I, I am looking for additional attacks with, uh, you know, from uh, from Iran uh, here. That, that's something that we have, I, I think we absolutely predict at this point. So, you know, briefly, just very, very briefly, and this is very, very high level, uh, you know, for a couple of the Iranian hacking groups, um, typically where you hear pandas uh, for uh, pandas for uh, China, uh, Chinese groups and tigers for Indian groups, et cetera. Um, you know, the, uh, the bears for the Russian groups here, kittens uh, largely uh, for the uh, <coughs> kittens, largely for the, uh, uh, for the Iranian groups. And so APT 33 and 34 are the two big groups operating right now. Uh, Rocket Kitten has some tie in, I believe with APT 33 and 34, I believe is Magic Hound. Uh, so again, different, you know, different vendors, different names, the whole, uh, the whole play here. I'm not nearly as interested in that as I am in their targeting, right? Uh, so in the past, they, they targeted uh, U.S. banks and financial industries. Uh, we saw them targeted previously. We, we've seen them target a lot in the Middle East, right? I mean, if I had to, you know, Iranian best of attacks, I think Middle East definitely takes the, uh, takes the cake. But, um, you know, d don't think for a minute that that's, that's just, uh, you know, that's just it. 
uh, you know, we saw in 2017, uh, there was public attribution uh, back to the hacking of UK Parliament members. Uh, incidentally, uh, kind of dovetailing on when we started talking about right, the removing or moving away from the Iran deal, right? We, the U.S. government, uh, began talking about this. So I'm kind of interested in your thoughts here. Well, what do you think targeting-wise, if you're one of the, let's say you're a business in one of the other countries that hasn't left the Iran deal yet, what do you, what do you think targeting there? What's, what's your thought? I don't put you on the spot. But well, being targeted? Yeah, what do you think yeah, the yeah. odds of the Iran's going to target you there as opposed to the U.S.? Uh, I mean, you know, it's, um, if, if you're still at the table, Ooh, that's an interesting question, right? I mean, I can see on the, uh, you are you are in cahoots with the U.S. And, and thus you are a target anyway. And then I can also see the, hey, you're still at the table, you're still backing the Iranian government and, and we're gonna we're gonna whitelist you in this case um, and, and not attack you. I, I, I think that uh, it's hard to gauge. That's real hard to gauge. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Cool, yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with this, uh, disagree with this at all. And I, I, I kind of am in, in with Brandon here, right? If you are, if you're still at the table, um, you know, do they want to, I guess kind of there's this flip side, right, of, of do they want to piss you off if you're still at the table, right? right? Um, you know, on the flip side, they, they, they didn't hack the email of the UK Parliament members to take them off. Um, they already knew our position, our, our government position. Uh, I suspect that this hack, you know, timing, the timing coordinates well. Uh, hacking these email accounts, I, I suspect, was to gain intelligence on where was the UK going to go. Right? Are they siding with the U.S.? Are they siding with the rest of the coalition? Um, you know, wh where is that going to go? And so, you know, if you're in a, a government entity uh, that's in one of those uh, or monitoring for government and still one of those countries still participating, I, I think I would actually expect to see an uptick in attacks. I think they, for our government folks, from an intelligence, right, because we're back to CIA, confidentiality, integrity, availability. On the confidentiality side, I wouldn't be worried in the U.S. I think they, they pretty well know our position, right? Um, in if I'm in one of these other countries that hasn't been very vocal, or even if we have publicly been vocal, what kind of talks are happening in the background? That's the stuff I'd want to know as, as a decision maker. Thoughts? So I, I think I'm thinking about as you're talking some of the uh, Iranian attacks, and, and I was they're definitely a, a chop shop of of hacking, right? There's intelligence oh, yeah. gathering there, and then there is sale of the credentials that they are harvesting. Um, I was uh, reading, you know, some of these university attacks uh, on the U.S. Oh, yeah. It is just for access to LexisNexis and, and you know, uh, educational type uh, reference material for college students and, and selling that. So really, it, it's kind of like um, utilizing all parts of uh, uh, of the animal uh, right. in, in the way of uh, in the way of hacking there. Um, probably went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but I really wanted to get that out. No, no, I, I like that. Yeah. I, I like kind of the. Because I hadn't thought about the, uh, I'd forgotten about the university hacks, right? Because the LexisNexis access, as well as some of the, uh, uh, you know, some of the publications, the academic publications. So I think that's another great, it's another great point. Because because there you're you're almost pushing into, do we think those are state sponsored attacks, or do we think those are? I mean, and where do you draw the line on state sponsored? Might be another. Well, I mean, you're pointing back to the uh, Middle Eastern target. So what's that? Uh, primarily APTs at thirty four. Yeah, uh, it's primarily Middle Eastern based. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, IP there um, that they're going after intellectual property. They're going after uh, technology to advance the Iranian government and the, the capabilities there. Um, and, and so, you know, there's uh, and again, it goes back to the these are uh, folks that are not tied to the government as in military entities. Uh, but they, as far as we know, as far as we know, yeah. as far as we know, yeah. uh, but there are organizations that are, are being 100 percent funded. Right? Their only stream of income is from the government. Um, but again, presumably, right? Yeah, yeah, presumably, another, yeah. Yeah. we haven't flown over to Iran yeah. because, yeah, yeah never. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I do like saffron. You do like saffron, rock, rock on, right? Um, so, so look, uh, you know, want to talk quickly about attack history because I think we can learn a lot from history. And, and if we look at the history of Iranian attacks, and these are attacks conducted likely by Iran, not necessarily against Iran, uh, that could probably fill up a whole other page, but that's less interesting. Um, you know, we're really interested in here, and Brandon mentioned this already. We're seeing a lot of economic espionage uh, in you know some of our uh, uh, some of our uh, you know folks that we work with in the Middle East as well. Uh, we saw the UK uh, MP, you know, they get their Prime Minister email compromise, uh, or sorry, the uh, uh, Member of Parliament uh, email compromise there that was uh, that was happening. Uh, and you know, again, that's confidentiality, uh, economic espionage, largely confidentiality. Uh, but then you look at some of the bank DDoS, that, that's largely availability. Sands Casino is both integrity and availability. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with the Sands Casino, um, this is uh, this is one uh, that the Iranians did. This is 2013, maybe, something like that. It's been a, been a few years ago. 
2013, something like that. Um, you know, among a lot of tensions or amidst among a lot of tensions, uh, one of the uh, the owner of the Sands Casino uh, out in Vegas said, uh, "Hey, uh, you know, uh, I know what we should do with with Iran. We should turn Tehran into a big glass parking lot." And uh, what are the odds? Uh, as he said that on CNN, uh, the Iranians were listening, didn't like that, uh, and basically uh, took over the casino uh, and wiped a ton of systems. Right. So again, you know, uh, game on. Uh, it's a destructive cyber attack, and, and certainly we've seen that as well with Shamoon, Saudi Aramco, uh, you know, and, and others here, right? So, so again, you know, kind of back to Brandon's point, these guys have run the gamut. I'd love to ask you, Jake, what, what do you think about, um, I've seen a lot of reports of, you know, the advancement that the Iranians have made since this deal in 2015. Um, are they going to, is is this, uh, is this ignition to tip the hand and kind of leverage the access and, and maybe capability increase uh, that they have on a nation state level. Do you think this is the time that it's done? Um, and uh, yeah. So, so, so no, this is a great, this is a great segue kind of into the cyber warfare side, right? Cause, cause I think what you're asking is the, you know, do we think they've increased in capability? The answer there is without a doubt. Yes. No, no, no question. Um, how much of that have we seen? Uh, I think in most cases, what we as incident responders and threat intelligence professionals see is, is the tip of the iceberg. Right, the proverbial tip of the iceberg. So I, I don't really know. Um, you know, I, I expect that they have lots of capabilities that we haven't yet seen. Um, if the question comes down to do you deploy them now or hold them in reserve, I that's a, that's the tough one. Um, my gut says now is not the time. Right, we're yeah. not in a shooting war. Um, you know, now now granted, uh, you know, there's limited internet ingress and egress to, to Iran, and if we get into a shooting war, I mean, there's always satellite out. Don't get me wrong. But we get into a shooting war. You know, how does that play? Man, that's far beyond uh, you know tactical level concerns, but but it is a really interesting piece here. Is this going to cause the deployment of some tools? I think yes, but but I think still whatever new stuff we see is is one not it. It's not the the whole of it, and, and two, I don't think it's the best, right? So I think even as we elevate, see elevated capabilities, I would caution people against saying, well, now we know what they have. I, I think they're not going to show their hand. Uh, I think until we we probably enter shooting war, or until that becomes close to inevitable, right? Mm -hmm. So, look uh, quickly. Let's talk talk about TTPs here because this is where really we make uh, yeah, rendition. At least you know we, we make our money as, as incident response, and uh, we do some penetration testing too. Don't get me wrong, but uh, but incident response and security ops center. And so we're always interested in TTPs. And and number one, unfortunately, is uh, spear phishing, right? And, and so I, I don't have anything to help you with here at all. Do you have a solution for spear phishing? Spear phishing uh, training, right? It starts it starts with your people. I mean, okay, it starts right? With your people. But but. But not here, right? I mean, realistically, I think we all know the training will help. But, but again, this is one where they're going to get in one way or the other, right? So I, I mean, I, I, and Brandon's right about this. This is something he and I have gone back and forth on a lot. I, I'm not anti-training. I just don't, I don't like it as a prescription for something that's that's going to help. It, it, it's a symptomatic. It's not a preventive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could yeah. probably do a whole other webcast yeah, we can do about webcast. that. Yeah. Okay. I, I apologize. And users all, are going to click. I mean, they they are. Are, it's always going to happen. And, and you know these these low uh, low tech attacks um, consistently work. Well, they do, you know, of course. Password yeah. sprays, spear phishing. I mean, Amen, brother. Gonna happen. Amen. And so you know we come back to uh, office documents with macros, right? Uh, you know, again, this is not super technologically advanced, but they're using it. Uh, so if you can disable macros by GPO, by all means, go and do it. Uh, that, that's one of our big big recommendations. Um, you know, and and this this again, even if you've made this argument before. Um, this is a great time to go make this argument again in light of the fact that we're losing uh, or that we're backing out of the Iran deal and Iranian actors who are like more likely than ever now to target U.S. organizations, uh, you know, are particularly, again, if you are in that think tank range or if you're in government in one of these other participating countries, this is a great time to go back and make this case again because you have a specific TTP used by a specific actor set that we know now is more likely to attack us than yesterday, right? Um, and then we kind of come back around to the super low tech side, right? And I'm still blown away that they are that anybody anywhere is successful using IRC, and yet we still see it. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to see it. Every time we see it, we laugh a little bit. We're like, is it 1995 again, right? Um, but but alas, uh, here, uh, yeah, here it is, right? Um, so uh, we see Iran, you know, this this IRC. Uh, we see PowerShell, of course, because who isn't using PowerShell today? Um, by the way, quick uh, quick plug here. If you're not up on PowerShell version 5, upgrade now and turn on script block logging. Um, you know, at a minimum, you're making your attacker's day bad and making your attacker's day suck a little worse. Um, I, I will note here, and I'm interested in your thought here on, on the 
semi-unique TCP port usage for command and control. Um, they have used some standard ports as well, but what, what do you think about, uh, I, I noticed there's a 43 at the end there, almost like a convention. Right? Is that? I mean, granted, my sample set is super tiny. Right? Mm. Um, what, what, what would you make of that? Uh, am, I, am I pulling too much out of there, or? Eh? Uh, well, I mean, if you want to go further, right? A four and four is eight. Three and five is eight. Uh, four oh my and gosh! Three is uh, seven. I mean, it's maybe it's eighty-seven. Yeah, beautiful mind home edition, man. I, I mean, totally hadn't gotten that. That's but, what I just yeah. took away from that. But I mean, you know, hey, unique port usage. That's always uh, that's a great. You know, you always know when someone has some dripper shell up. Uh, oh, and, four, and, you know, four, four, four. Exactly, my goodness. Right? Yes. Um, so, uh, uh, port uses is it the it's the end all be all because you see traffic on four, 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 three. Uh, do you freak out? Uh, absolutely not. Right? But, um, no, I, I wouldn't freak out. But but look, today if I don't have alerts on these ports, this is something I'm going to add in. Right. Yep, so yep. so it's a rule that it's a rule that we've added at our SOC, uh, our security operations center. Um, and, and again, I would expect us to, uh, again, if you don't have this today, I, I would add it now outbound on either of these ports um, and uh, take a look. And domain wise, these guys love to register domains, lots and lots and lots of domains. Right. Yep. Uh, so look, I'll, I'll give a couple of closing thoughts and we'll open them wide up to questions here. Um, but uh, look, we, we expect to see attacks. This isn't FUD because that, that's not what we do. Uh, not interested in that, but but I, I do really expect to see attacks coming from Iranian groups. Um, and, and listen, if this isn't something that your management has asked you about yet, trust me, uh, I'll, I'll bet you good money in my pocket here that by Monday, somebody from management in your larger organizations is going to come to you and say, as security professionals, and say, hey, is this going to play out? And again, I, the reason I say Monday is that I expect the weekly, the weekend news shows to, to, to try to spin cyber into this. And, and I don't think it's much of a spin. I think that it's a it's probably a legitimate concern of us, yeah. of ours at least. Uh, Iran has a history of targeting the energy sector as well as government financial targets. That doesn't mean that if you're not one of those that you're safe. Uh, again, you know, particularly with the wild card side, if you work in the U.S., uh, you know, and you're seen as a, I think you're seen largely as, as a valid target. I uh, remember Iran is, is still split between that elected government and the Shah, right? So you've got the religious, even in the military side, right? A lot of people I don't think realize that you've got the, you know, the, uh, the IRGC, who's largely a religious-backed military loyal to the Shah, right? And then you've got the regular army loyal to the president, right? Um, and ideally, both of those are going after the same targets. But but I think both of these probably have nation-state hacking arms as well. I'd be surprised if they don't. Um, you know, I would also say DDoS is hard to prevent, particularly in the level that they did it earlier on against the banks. Uh, but look, these intrusion techniques are, are super easy to discover uh, because Iranian hacking, at least what we've seen to date, isn't exactly state of the art, right? Again, we're talking IRC stuff. We're talking some weird command and control port usage uh, that really sticks out like a sore thumb once you see it, you know, exiting the network. Um, I guess, you know, this is probably where I'll turn it over to questions here. Uh, I'm interested to know, do, do you have any thoughts that you want to, uh, you want to bang in on there? Uh, so uh, I was talking about the, the uh, IRGC and, and again, the, uh, the backs there, what was it the uh, latest indictment from, from us on the Iranian? Yeah, oh yeah, said, absolutely. Um, March. Yeah. Um, uh, there was, uh, I noticed in there, I kind of had a little chuckle, the ROGC gave a, a letter of appreciation uh, and, and credit for some, uh, against somebody's uh, military uh, obligation uh, for yeah. the country in, in return for, uh, you know, cyber operations. So, I mean, there's, there's definitely links there. Uh, yeah, that's no, that's a great, uh, that's a great point. Great point. Um, so... Yeah, I love that somebody else has jumped into the chat as Jake Williams. That's uh, that's outstanding. Um, <laughs> way, way to go. I uh, see. What's the likelihood that Iran could imprison or deny private entities that were performing uh, hacking operations for the state, right? Um, like we may observe occasionally with China. Um, I, I, Gosh, this is a really good question. I, I'm interested to know your, uh, your thought on this because I'm thinking the odds are low. Very, very. I think very low. I think very low. Yeah, I, I think... So, so, so look, uh, China didn't do this either, right? A until we had normalized, more normalized relations with, with China, right? Um, and it was really kind of the downswing of China's full on tear it up nation state, burn to the ground approach. I say burn to the ground, go hack everything approach, probably is the, now that we're talking destructive cyber attacks too. So I think um, answering fake Jake's question there, um, unless you really are actually another Jake Williams, uh, I'm going to go with a, uh, you know, this is odd. Uh, we would we would probably not expect to see much of that. Uh, I, I don't expect to see no. much of that. Um, but but who knows, right? Uh, you know, and, and this is something that we brought up a couple of times. And 
I brought it up to a couple of folks, you know, is that, um, you know, when, when you take on that kind of work for the government, whether it's a, uh, you know, whether it's a private entity working for the government, whether it's a private entity not working for the government, um, you know, when, when you start doing this stuff, you have to realize you may be a political pawn down the road, right? Um, and, and I'm speaking from experience here, uh, direct experience, but, but you know, again, you could be a political pawn down the road. So I'd be very, very cautious there. That said, again, I, I don't know what the odds are that they're going to, I don't know what the odds are there. I, I, would, I would say pretty low in, our, in, in my estimation, but again, that's a lot of political less than cyber. Um, do I think these hacktivists will be limited to DDoS attacks or you know, the capability for damaging attacks like ICS critical infrastructure? No question do they have the capability for damaging attacks. Do you want to take this uh, and talk about this a little with Shamoon or do you want? No, um, well, I, I, what I was going to say there is, I mean, we're, we're already looking at destructive DDoS attacks. I mean, you combine that with energy sector targets and, and it's just, yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, I guess where, where I would kind of draw the line on that a little bit is, uh, <clears throat> I say draw the line, but where I might might add a little bit of flavor there is to think about, you know, we talk about threats being that intersection being the 10th opportunity and capability, IOC, right? Um, and we, they've already shown the intent to perform destructive cyber attacks. They've also shown on the capability vertical, um, they've uh, they've driven, uh, you know, malware that really controls, uh, you know, ICS devices. So, so you've seen the destructive intent. You've seen the uh, capability for ICS. I, I don't think it's a bridge too far to say that they could uh, perform one of those attacks. Now, listen, I'm not for a minute going to play the whole, oh my gosh, they're going to tear down the grid. Because we all know that that's not the way the grid works. Um, but but I, I don't doubt that they could do some damage. Uh, we were chatting yesterday, I think it was, at lunch about Saudi Aramco. And, and um, a couple of days ago, I can't remember. I know I mentioned Saudi Aramco. And I... My, my personal opinion on the Aramco attack, and I don't know if you want to add any more flavor to this, is that while, while they didn't enter the industrial control systems stuff, I, I don't doubt for a minute. But, you know, they attacked the industrial, or sorry, the administrative side, not the industrial side of, of the Saudi Aramco network. Um, I, I don't doubt for a minute they have the capability to, to hack that piece. I don't have, I, I was talking yesterday, I think, or the day before, or whatever, I think the difference there is just act of war, right? Yeah, I mean, well, it's powerful just to say, hey, we can get this close to defense. We can get just this close to the line, and there's uh, and nothing then, you can do about it. Right, and then and then just let the uh, you know let, let the target kind of think, uh, what's next? Uh, what, what's my next step? Here? So yeah, um, definitely, I mean, it's a uh, provocative, provocative statement. And, well, to be fair, how long did they really have to wait? Right, because a year later, ish, two two years later, we see Shamoon too, right? Uh, ish, two years, three years, something like that. A few years later, we see Shamoon too targeting other uh, you know other uh, uh, Saudi uh, Saudi facilities. Uh, we saw a lot of hard coded credentials there. If you remember that with the uh, was the Saudi, uh, uh, I think it was Saudi air traffic control, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, regardless, we saw malware with hard coded credentials already built into it to worm its way through these networks. Right, and that that again, as you start looking at capability, right, you're, you're showing dedicated development shops no longer using you know uh, directly using commodity malware like IRC stuff. And that's that's really what I think is most interesting about Iran is that giant like spread of capability. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're going all the way from IRC bots to let me custom code worms of hard coded credentials to let me speak directly, you know, on uh, you know, using, let me speak directly, you know, to your uh, to your industrial control devices, right? Um, do I think the? Oh wait, sorry. Have these actors been observed in a sophisticated attack platform developing O days? Um, I don't know that I've ever seen an O day that we've attributed back to a land directly. Do you have one? That, I mean, like a, a prominent no day that you trickle back from the Iranian group. I mean, they, they love to weaponize, you know, uh, office uh, office. Oh, they love to weaponize. Yeah, weaponize <laughs> office exploits for the win. No, no question there. I, I think we've seen a couple that they've used that I think some folks called the mo days, but but I think this is them repurposing other stuff. And I mean, Iran, make no mistake about it too, has you know, this isn't a bunch of backwoods folk. Um, they've got you know robust uh, academic programs. A lot of great. There's a lot of really good sites. If you read uh, the peer reviewed journals, there's a lot of really good, um, <clears throat> uh, really a, a lot of good academic research, a lot of good academic research coming out of Iran in the computer security field. So um, I, while we haven't seen O days that, that I can recall that I would have tied back to Iran, we've seen some that have been that the Iranians have used, Iran uh, attack groups attributed back to Iran have used, but 
before a patch was available or as a patch became available. Um, but, but we think that they, were, they weren't the first to use it, right? So it's one of those things in the wild, it's being used. Uh, but again, I, I kind of bring back, you know, their academic research side because there's a lot of the defense that plays into that, right? So, so yeah. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Ah, ah, what a cool question there. Uh, do you think U.S. would ever hand over U.S. citizens or government employees that have engaged in cyber operations against other countries? Uh, I'm going to go with I hope not, uh, but uh, I won't say it's uh, won't say it's impossible. Um, that's another webcast for another time. Uh, have you seen or heard of Iranian actors targeting military networks and organizations? Do you feel this could produce an uptick? Um, I have I seen or heard of? Uh, I, I I've heard of through a friend, but I, we don't do any work in military networks. We do work in defense industrial base, and we've definitely seen some, uh, we've seen some evidence of attackers that eh, follow some uh, with groups there in defense industrial base networks, uh, but, but pretty thin compared to, uh, you know, compared to the usual suspects, right? So, so again, this comes down, I think, largely to, uh, I think largely to the number of folks they have working, um, but, but again, I, I, yeah. Uh, do I think that our actions uh, in coming out of the uh, the deal could that produce an uptick? Um, what do you think? Our actions coming out of the deal. Yeah, basically us backing out yeah. of the deal. Do we think that's going to produce an uptick and then targeting U.S. military organizations? And does that make sense for Iran to use their limited capabilities there? I can't see targeting military organizations. I, I agree, and we've already said you know uptick. I think definitely plausible, uh, definitely likely. Um, yeah, globally, uh, targeting, up, right, 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 but here, up, right? Yeah, yeah. targeting uh, U.S. military. I, I, don't, I don't know if I had a good. Um, I don't know if I'd say that. Yeah, I'll give you my two cents on this. Uh, just, just as another thought, uh, you know, on that uh, kind of replying back. I, I think um, as we take a look at the, uh, take a look at military, and we, this is really getting back into how do you prioritize cyber operations, right? Um, you know, when you bring these capabilities, these are these are bullets that you can fire out of a gun, right? Is is really the way to think about these implants, malware exploits, etc. Um, if yeah, I think uh, I think if we were if I were a betting man, I, I'd probably bet against it because if, for for two reasons: one, the U.S. military is a big target, right? Um, and, and and if you're going to burn one of these bullets, if you're going to fire one of these bullets out of your gun, because the second it gets detected. You can't use it anywhere else, right? I mean, you have to retool it before it can be, you know, gone, thrown back into the wild. Depending on how good the IOCs are, it sticks. And I, you know, I think, I think I, I would say no. I, I wouldn't want to target the U.S. military for, for two reasons. One, uh, it's such a big organization. The odds of me, as as baby Iran, uh, baby being you know smaller smaller organization, uh, you know, I, I think that my odds of being able to generate good kinetic effects are low. And then I think on the second side, I, I don't, I don't really know that uh, that you want to throw it. I mean, you're throwing it in the lion's den at that point, right? You're maximizing your chances of being detected, trying to break into U.S. military networks, right? So that, that's a, I, I think what I'm looking at there is a high risk, low yield operation. I mean, would you disagree with that? Or yeah, and, I'm thinking aloud here, obviously. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's, it's still, we see destructive cyber attacks. We see uh, hacktivism being pointed to. I, I think that. Uh, it, it's all uh, high noise and, and a lot of it in multiple locations. And, and I don't think that will, you know, I, I can't see that they being focused directly on the U.S. military. I think it's um, not, uh, I don't think it's the time. Yeah. This, so, this is the reason. Okay. So I, I think we're probably in, uh, you know, pretty good agreement here that, yeah, uh, expect to see a global uptick in Iranian hacking activity, probably not directed against uh, the U.S. military. I think it's probably where we're coming from. Yeah. Um, I, I've got one of these, uh, another question. Have you ever been, have there ever been uh, white, gray, or black uh, black hat psyops that have been suspected or attributed back to Iran, similar to how Russia is suspected of conducting that type of activity? Um, not that, not directly attributed to Iran, focused on the U.S. Um, I strongly suspect, strongly suspect that they've probably been involved in that more in the Middle East, right? I mean, they shut down Turkey's electric grid. I think that one's pretty pretty clear. Um, and they are, you know, they, they did that uh, as a government destabilization measure, I would, I would expect, right? Uh, was it 2016? 2016, yeah. they dropped Turkey's grid or a chunk of the grid. Um, and so, you know, I, I, would, I would take a look at that as, as a, and I know what you're asking, I know this isn't explicitly what you're asking for, um, but, but I would take a look at that as a, you know, the, the effect 
the, their interest in the effect wasn't turning off the power in Turkey, right? Again, that's a bullet they fired out of the gun. They lost that access because they fired the because they fired the bullet. If they go to war with Turkey tomorrow, they don't have the same access to turn the power off ahead of that battle, to sow confusion ahead of the battle, right? Um, but but what I'll say then is what it speaks to is intent, right? Because this is a psychological operation. Their intent wasn't to cut the power. Their intent was to undermine the government, right? And undermine confidence in the government. And so to that extent, I would say that that's definitely an example of a psychological operation, um, you know, conducted by them. And, and another one that we would, uh, that I would point back to the Sands Casino, right? Uh, that was a direct retaliatory strike, direct retaliatory strike for speaking bad about and, and talking about, uh, you know, very publicly the government of Iran. Um, so, so I would say, uh, very negatively, about the government of Iran. Um, so I guess I would say with that, you know, those are two good examples of, of places where, and, and by the way, too, just to follow through, you know, again, we're on the spot here for, for answering, um, or, or, you know, pulling these questions up. If it sounds like I'm rambling, I'm, I'm kind of talking through my answer. But, but also what, what's being asked about here is, is what I would call an analytical unknown. Uh, analytic unknown. Um, and, you know, when, when we're presented with one of those, we extrapolate the unknown from, from the knowns, right? And so, uh, you know, our, our thought process, as well as uh, I think probably just the right way to do analysis, um, is, is to go back to the knowns and extrapolate the unknowns, at least the probabilities of those, from what we know now. Um, so so kind of coming back to close that one, uh, close that question out, I would say that, you know, I, I can point to two tangible examples of, uh, and, and you might even, gosh, would you even consider Saudi Aramco a third? That's a hard push, but hmm. yeah, that's, that's good. I, I can yeah. make that connection. Yeah, I yeah. can make the argument, right? Yeah. I don't know that I like it as well as the other two examples, but I might even call Saudi Ramco a third. Um, I'll stick with just two or 2.5 or whatever you're going to call Saudi Ramco in there. But, but I think, uh, yeah, I, I think that those are examples of them uh, performing largely psychological operations through cyber, um, whether or not they try to do election influencing. Uh, but if it's a question of do I think they'll try to influence uh, U.S popular opinion in some way, absolutely bet the money in my pocket on it. Yeah. I don't think that they're going to do the same things that we saw in the 2016 election with Russia, just because I think a lot of those doors are being closed, right? Uh, Cambridge Analytica, for instance, actually did close its doors, right? So anyway, any other questions before we go ahead and close this out? Alrighty then. Hey, uh, thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, I know we rambled a little bit because, you know, got some questions out of I don't call them out of left field, but, but stuff that we weren't necessarily prepped for. Uh, but uh, that's that's the great part about all these is, you know, sparking, uh, sparking some thoughts, conversation. Um, with that, we're going to go ahead and break away here. We'll make a, a recording of this available uh, for any of your friends that missed it. Uh, anyway, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you at the next one.